Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. My special guest this week is Dr. Bart Haynes, director of the Duke Human Vaccine Institute and the Frederick M. Haynes Professor of Medicine and Immunology. Today is the 35th year that Americans have observed World AIDS Day. This year's theme is Remember and Commit. Dr. Haynes and I will talk about HIV, the quest for a vaccine, and other projects within the Institute. But first, I'd like to share a few updates. Highlights from our faculty's work this week demonstrates the depth and breadth of the impact of what we do here at Duke. Dr. Simon Davis, assistant professor in the Department of Neurology and graduate student Xin Yang Wang have shed new light on how the brain forms memories. Their study, published in the Journal of Neuroscience, reveals that memory processes are driven by an interaction between the hippocampus and the cortex in the brain, rather than independent activity in either region. This research gives us new understanding of cortical hippocampal communication and suggests new targets for therapy, such as transcranial magnetic stimulation for people living with age-related memory disorders. Research by Dr. Gayathri Devi, professor in the departments of surgery and pathology, and colleagues, including lead author Larissa Gerhardt Serna, showed that North Carolina's urban counties had higher overall incidence of breast cancer than rural counties. The findings, appearing in the journal Scientific Reports, reveal the important role that poor environmental quality plays in the development and incident of breast cancer. The research will help guide the development of measures to reduce the incidence of the disease in the most vulnerable communities. And some very exciting news reflecting a new community partnership. Congratulations to Dr. Kanisha Zimmerman. She and her team have won a $9.9 .9 million grant from the Department of Education to scale full-service community schools. This will allow students and their families better access to wraparound health services. Students learn better, have increased attendance, and are more engaged in their learning environment when their whole needs are met. Dr. Zimmerman and her team are the only organization in North Carolina to win this award. And thanks to the officers, members, and advisors of the Student National Medical Association for meeting with me this week. I appreciate the time to speak with students as I learn from them. The more that I listen, the more that I learn. And I look forward to hosting more events with students so I can continue to hear from you. I'm optimistic about the benefits these events will provide for all of us. And once again, I strongly encourage everybody in the Duke Health community to be up to date with COVID vaccinations. The vaccines provide the greatest protection against the most commonly circulating variants. And remember, masking is strongly encouraged, especially this time of year when we have so many circulating respiratory viruses. And to end with truly exciting news, yesterday it was announced that Duke University will receive its biggest gift ever from the Duke Endowment, a $100 million gift to help launch the next 100 years of the university. And we're all so excited about our future. Now, please sit in on my conversation with Dr. Haynes. Bart, thanks so much for joining me today. My pleasure. As you know, December 1st is World AIDS Day, which is a, an event we have honored uh, almost for the full AIDS pandemic. Tell me what you think is where we are currently. Well, we've made a lot of progress, but we have a ways to go. Right. Uh, we've made a lot of progress as a field in developing antiretroviral drugs that have essentially turned uh, HIV infection and disease uh, into a chronic disease with a normal lifespan. Well, just but, that's remarkable, right? It's very remarkable. Remember when we saw the first AIDS patients, Indeed. it was a death sentence. Absolutely. And it, but that's only for people who can get the drugs. And so right. we, we have a lot of work to do uh, to get the drugs to more people around the world. And we also I have a lot of work to do, of course, in prevention. Now, treatment, um, prophylactic treatment, can be used for prevention, of course, mm -hmm. um, but not everyone can have access to, to that, nor is the uptake um, what we'd like it to be to eliminate the pandemic. So that's why we're working on an HIV vaccine. It will be transformative uh, if we can uh, get it into the public. So we still have vulnerable populations. Who are the most vulnerable today? Well, I think it's young people, mm -hmm. uh, it's women, um, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, but actually around the world. We have uh, not uh, made our goal of, of reducing by 75 percent the, the number of, of new transmissions by 2020. We missed that goal. We only reduced them 
uh, globally about 45 percent. Mm. Um, and so we have a long way to go to protect those vulnerable populations. The ideal prevention strategy is a vaccine, something yes. that you have been working on for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Why has it been so difficult? Well, it turns out that, as, as you know in, in your own work, that HIV is a rapidly mutating uh, RNA virus, right. similar but uh, more, more diverse than SARS-CoV-2. But the great difference is, is that it inserts into our own genetic material and hides from both antiretroviral drugs and hides from the immune system. Mm. The second point is, is that uh, the, this RNA virus that causes AIDS uh, has evolved over hundreds and maybe thousands of years in primates, non-human primates and over a hundred years in humans, to, to look like our own proteins and our own um, uh, body. And so our, our immune system really doesn't want to make the right kind of antibodies. Right and they're disfavored. So we're having to learn how to educate the immune system to do what we want it to do. The antibodies that we want to induce are not harmful. Uh, it's just a diabolical escape mechanism that the virus has. Well, so many parts of, of the approach are quite unique. One is that you have very, very talented investigators. All of them buy on to the goal, but they all have their own science that they move forward. That's absolutely the case, and I, I think collaboration and teamwork and team science uh, is the answer to many of the big complex problems that we're facing today. We have team, really wonderful team members who are immunologists, who are biophysicists, who are chemists, who are structural biologists, um, and computational biologists, and moving into the area of artificial intelligence supporting our research. Um, we know what we have to do. It just takes us too long to do it now. And so mm -hmm. figuring out how to use uh, new innovation and new technology to speed up what we know we need to do to engineer the immune system is the name of the game. And it's a team science and keeping the team together. And the, the pillar of team science is trust and, 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 and recognition for the members of the team for, for their contributions and also to allow them to grow as, as individual outstanding scientists. I want to talk a little bit about you personally. You've been an iconic figure here <laughs> at Duke. You've had lots of different roles, and you've really been at the heart and soul of the intersection of medicine and science. Give me your perspective on where we are as an institution now. Duke is, is a very adaptive place. It is. It's a very collaborative place, and um, it's a place where um, uh, people can, can uh, grow and develop and express themselves, as you said earlier, both in working on teams but also in working on their own careers. And um, I think the collaborative nature of Duke and the ability to cross silo walls is really, really important. And I think that will be sustaining for this university and, and for the medical center going forward. Well, I personally have learned so much from you and so appreciate your leadership. And so thank you for all that you continue to do. Well, thank you, Mary. And thanks to everybody. Have a great weekend.